What's going on you guys? It is The Talking Sasquatch and it's great to have you back. Now some of you guys may remember the last time I showed off the Card Pewter by M5 Stack. Now one of the reasons why I love this thing is because it's just really cheap and it's an easy way for you to get your hands on something that you can actually mess around with. By the way, if you got one of these things, check out M5 Loader. It allows you to install all the firmwares and kind of select between them. Really cool. Well another piece of hardware which has a ton of potential is this little guy. This is the cheap yellow display. Now, this little guy has got a ton of potential. Not only is it a display, but you can see in the back, it's actually got an ESP32 in it. You'll see it's even got an onboard SD card as well as USB-C down there. It's super useful. Now, not only does this cheap little guy have a ton of great features, but it also has one really important thing, a community. Now, I've mentioned time and time again that really with Flipper Zero, the one main driving force for how awesome that device finally got was the community. And this little guy's got a community growing up right behind it. And hey, maybe if I can convince you guys that this thing's actually cool, maybe you'll be part of it as well. I am so psyched to share the cheap yellow display with you guys. Let's go. Now, a little while ago, a community member named Brian Locke reached out to me to introduce me to the cheap yellow display. So it's been on my radar for a while, but a few things kind of came up recently that really got me, you know, wanting to make a video about it. Now, it turns out on Etsy, people are selling the cheap yellow display as a Wi-Fi penetration testing tool flashed with Marauder, and they're selling it for like $60. They're not even selling it with a cool case like this one that I printed right over there on the Bamboo X1 Carbon. Now, usually I try not to get too involved in things like that, but it just seems like such a waste and kind of a scam because this guy, this guy costs $17 on Amazon. And hey, I know what you might be thinking. Like, I don't want to have to deal with all the firmware stuff. That sounds difficult. And if it came down to having to use Arduino IDE, which I despise, I'd agree with you. But the cheap yellow display community has got you covered. They actually have a web flasher for installing that exact same firmware. It couldn't be easier. All right, so let's take a closer look at the cheap yellow display. Behold, in all its glory, the cheap yellow display. Now, obviously, we have the star of the show, the 2.8 inch 320 by 240 TFT screen. One really nice thing about the screen is the fact that it actually uses the ILI 9341 drivers, which are used on a lot of devices like the native Just Call Me Coco's Wi-Fi Marauder. Makes it really easy to code for. If we go ahead and flip this over, we'll see that there's a lot going on here too. So here we'll see the cheap yellow display's actual name, which is the ESP32 2432S028. Not really the catchiest of names. Right over here, we'll see the real brains of the operation. It is the ESP32 room, which does Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Then we have the obligatory boot and reset buttons, just like every other ESP32 has. We don't really need buttons for the screen because it's a touch screen. Right over here, we have a JST connection for a speaker. Right over here, we have micro USB we have USB-C and we have a little connector for a power supply. We've got an onboard micro USB slot and then two plugs for IO. One is for an extended IO and one is for a temperature and humidity sensor. All right, so now that we know the anatomy of this thing, let me show you how it works. So let's go ahead and take our micro USB and plug that in and we'll get to flashing it. All right, so this is pretty much where it all started. This is Brian Lott's GitHub. Make sure to give him a star. So this is basically where he just kind of shows off a little bit of information on the cheap yellow display and kind of explains a bit of why he likes this project so much. One of the great things about the cheap yellow display is that it pretty much has all of the things that you need right out of the box. You don't have to do anything. You don't really need to solder anything. It all just kind of works. And as he says over here, basically, it's just a great community project. Everybody's on the same page. Everybody's using the same hardware. So it's just an easy thing to develop for. Now, Brian's gone through and given us a ton of great resources when it comes to the cheap yellow display. I'm going to go ahead and download the zip to my desktop and we're going to head back here later. But check it out. Even if we go to 3D models he's got a bunch of different cases for this just right on the github you can click on the stls and you can check them out actually here let me do the top down and i'll show you what mine looks like so yeah i grabbed the stl for this directly off of his github it's a great little case it has spots for heat set inserts which are really nice so this whole thing just screws together and goes together super super easily actually might as well throw this thing in here while i'm here might as well throw the sd card in just like so boom put this in like so there we are pop the top on like that we got four screws and there it is super cool i love the transparent filament on these cases just look how good that is 
All right, cool. So beyond that, he's actually got a ton of examples as well. We're gonna show you how to install one of these later on using Platform IO. But you know what we won't wait for is this segue to today's sponsor, PCBWay. Look, do you wanna make something like the cheap yellow display yourself? Well, guess what? You can, thanks to PCBWay. Now, when I say that PCBWay can help you make pretty much any project you want like this, it's because that's what people like this use to make these devices. They can help you each and every step along the way from designing your PCB to printing a case to doing CNC sheet metal fabrication. They do so much for you. You can even design a PCB and then select a display from their module store for it. Now you've got a PCB and a display, but you gotta connect them together. You can even buy a soldering iron there for it. That's where I got mine. You see that cool screwdriver I was using to put the case together? PCBWay.com. So no matter what your electronics project is, PCBWay.com has got you covered. As always, thank you so much to PCBWay for your continued support. You guys are absolutely awesome. Let's get back at it. All right, so what we're gonna show you now is actually the GitHub for Frank Fletcher's ESP32 Marauder for the cheap yellow display. As always, make sure to give him a star. And let's scroll down here because it's just got some information about Marauder, but what they have is a web flasher. This thing is amazing. I love web flashers. Now, as we said before, we've got it connected via USB-C, so we can click the connect button right here. And then I can see we've got two items on here. I am always extremely careful to make sure that I don't accidentally screw up my clock. I actually flashed over my clock this morning. I was very sad. So I'm gonna unplug this just to make sure I know what port we're on. So we're definitely COM13. Just click the connect button. There we go, we can select the board. So mine is USB without GPS, because I don't have GPS. We're gonna select that. And actually, let me pull up the camera and you can watch with me what's going on here. All right, here we go. Just go ahead and press the program button and it's gonna do its thing. It does take a couple minutes, so, you know, be patient, it'll get there. Also, it is best practice to leave this window in the foreground, so don't minimize or anything. According to the flasher, it could help. I don't know, but we'll find out. Hey, and look at that, flashing process complete. All we have to do is we unplug this and plug this back in. All of a sudden we have Marauder running. How freaking cool is that? Super quick, super easy. And now this thing's worth 60 bucks on Etsy. Very cool. Now, for those of you who aren't familiar with ESP32 Marauder, it is a Wi-Fi penetration testing tool. It also has Bluetooth, so there's got a ton of sniffers and a ton of cool stuff that it can do. If we go through some of the options, we have Bluetooth attacks, just like the BLE spam that we have on the flipper. We've also got Wi-Fi attacks here. We can do all sorts of fun stuff, Rick rolling, beacon spams, deauthentication of targeted devices, Devices. This is how we can grab handshakes. It does a bunch of really cool stuff. Now, if you want to support the creator of ESP32 Marauder, you can buy one directly from Just Call Me Coco, link down below. He does restock on the 1st and 15th of every month, and he does typically sell out, so get in there quick. It's kind of crazy that in like two minutes, you can take a $17 cheap yellow display and make it into a working Wi-Fi Marauder. Now for that project, obviously it does have some drawbacks. Like there's no JST connection for a battery. It does have this weird battery connector that it came with. It's, I mean, it's not that weird. So you could hook it up, but it's a little bit different. There's also no great way to connect an SMA antenna to this. So you're definitely gonna be a little bit limited on range, but that's not all. There's also some cool stuff that Brian threw in with his repo. So let's hop back onto the desktop and check it out. So yeah, I went ahead and decompressed the repository right here on the desktop, and then I can show you what we can do with Platform IO. So let's go ahead and fire up Visual Studio Code VS, and we'll get you some Platform IO. So let's go down to Platform IO. You just gotta install it like a plugin. And it's gonna go to uh, pick a folder. Where are we gonna go today? So yeah, we're in here to the examples, and he's got projects. Let's go ahead and just do the rolling clock. One of the things I love about Platform IO is that you can just open the folder that the project is in and effectively just fire it off right there. It's super cool. One thing I am gonna do is change it from auto to selecting the port manually. Why am I doing that? Because again, as I was preparing for this video, I overwrote my Nixty clock for the fifth time. I keep talking about it and I keep doing it. So I know this is COM13. And then we're just gonna go ahead and click the upload button down 
down here. This will build and upload all in one step. It's so, so easy. I love platform IO so much. It's so much better than Arduino IDE. A few moments later. Hey, look at that. Just like that, we've got ourselves a working clock. Super cool. I love the cheap yellow display. All right, so that's kind of a quick and dirty introduction to the cheap yellow display. Now we do have a really cool project coming up with this thing in the near future, so keep an eye out. Is there anything you'd like to see on the cheap yellow display? Leave a comment down below. And do you know of any other cool gadgets like this you'd like to see me cover? Because I mean, Brian just came up to me and he was like, I love the cheap yellow display. I hope you love it too, and I do. Check out Brian's GitHub, Discord, and YouTube channels, link down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please make sure to like, comment, subscribe. It helps me out a ton. You guys are absolute legends and we'll catch you next time.